scenario. Right. Then we move on to uh, the alkalosis side of things, metabolic alkalosis. We know that increase bicarbonate in the presence of increased pH is the very definition of metabolic uh, alkalosis. Uh, what could go wrong uh, raising, uh, resulting in metabolic alkalosis? Well, there may be an over ingestion of antacids, basically with this alkali to deal with uh, acid burn or uh, acid reflux disease. Uh, uh, any, in, uh, any increased ingestion of antacids may, may result in this. Uh, then there's the interesting case of uh, hemorrhage, uh, which is ECF volume contraction. And this again is uh, something that I discussed in the uh, diagnosis bit, that the diagnosis acid based lecture. That volume contraction, you see volume contraction basically leads to decreased GFR. And when the GFR is decreased, the tubular fluid amount is decreased. When the amount is decreased, the velocity is decreased. Uh, blood carrying its uh, filtered sodium hangs around the PCT uh, longer than it usually should. And so the sodium hydrogen antiport mechanism uh, can work in this scenario more, which it does. Uh, taking in uh, more sodium than it usually does and secreting more hydrogen than it normally does. Uh, this leads to, the, and, and again, the hydrogen is coupled by the bicarbonate uh, reabsorption. Uh, if I remember, I'll put a, 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 a reference here for that lecture. Uh, there's a, there's a, a picture of uh, the cell PCT uh, showing all of this going on, the bicarb being reabsorbed, the, so, uh, the uh, hydrogen being excreted all of this basically results in metabolic acidosis. And we call it uh, contraction alkalosis because it is coupled with basically a volume contraction, say in hemorrhage or severe dehydration and so on. Um, then an even more interesting um, cause of metabolic alkalosis is a volume contraction uh, together uh, with loss of non-volatile acid, basically fixed acid which is uh, the case is case in vomiting. In vomiting, you lose gastric HCL and you also lose fluid, excessive vomiting. It should say excessive vomiting. You lose gastric HCL, which is the fixed acid. And of course, there is volume contraction because we have lost a lot of fluid as well. This is so special that we have actually dedicated the next whole slide to it. It's very interesting. Let's, let's deal with it in the next slide, inshallah. The compensation, again, the buffers will be the immediate, the acute ones, uh, the respiration, we, we, we talked about this, that increased pH actually inhibits the respiration, uh, 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 leading to a raise in PCO2 because the respiratory centers have been depressed. Uh, the PCO2 is raised to basically counter alkalosis. And this stat is basically how much, it's a quantification of how much PCO2 have you raised for each uh, unit increase of bicarbonate. It's 0.7 mmHg increase in PCO2 for each one uh, milli equivalent liter increase in plasma bicarbonate. And right at the end, I put an asterisk here. Increased excretion of bicarbonate is the ultimate uh, solution. Uh, the, uh, when I say solution, I, I mean accurate solution. Of course, this is a solution. So is this, but these are compensations. This ultimately is the solution, the kidney which is the master of the pH, is the master of so many other things. This kidney is, uh, is responsible for bringing things back to God, all right? Now in this case, um, the mind goes obviously to the simpler things first. What is metabolic acidosis? It's increase in plasma bicarbonate, right? So how hard can it be uh, uh, to think that uh, excretion of, uh, increased excretion of bicarbonate by the kidney uh, really is the solution for every ill here. It is, it is. So basically uh, in causes where you have simple increase in bicarbonate such as antacids and this, that, the other, uh, these are simpler uh, 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 causes and have a, uh, at the end have a simpler uh, role for kidney to do increase its uh, bicarbonate excretion. However, there are certain issues, certain complications in certain uh, special cases, such as this. So if the metabolic acidosis, alkalosis rather, is, is accompanied by ECF volume contraction, so vomiting now 
comes to the front. You have to differentiate vomiting from obviously increased antacid uh, ingestion. Uh, that's a clear uh, differentiation. Uh, but when you compare it vomiting with hemorrhage, that's the closer one. And that's what I'm going to talk about. Uh, what's the difference between uh, hemorrhage and vomiting as a cause for metabolic alkalosis? Well, in uh, hemorrhage, you have volume contraction. So ECF volume contraction will be there. But what won't be there is loss of any fixed acid. It's hemorrhage. It has nothing to do with any fixed acid, right? So it's simple ECF volume contraction, okay? Any other cause is not even volume contraction, like ingestion of some excessive alkali, like an antacid. That's a simple, straightforward, just increase the bicarbonate excretion, and that's that. In hemorrhage, uh, uh, as we'll see, in any scenario where ECF volume contracts, you have a slightly more complication uh, to handle. And when ECF contraction happens to be coupled with loss of a fixed acid, you have a double whammy situation, a double cause of uh, metabolic alkalosis, which basically feeds off each other and quote unquote maintains the metabolic al alkalosis. And this is the weird part. This is what weird or may interesting, depends on how you see it. So let's solve this out. Uh, vomiting is loss of gastric HCL, excessive vomiting, as you say, uh, in which you have uh, lost fixed acid, and this has this easily goes into the metabolic alkalosis side of things, right? But at the same time, you are also losing fluid, so ECF volume would contract. Now check this out. Most of this information you should know, except maybe one or two bits here. So just remember, principal cell, alpha integrated cell angiotensin 2 and aldosterone. All of this we have done in the previous lectures. It just comes together here. So ECF volume contraction basically will trigger angiotensin 2 via the renin angiotensin aldosterone pathway. Angiotensin 2, amongst other things, the many things that it does, it also basically triggers that sodium hydrogen antiport mechanism at the PCT, which I had mentioned. Okay, it increases it. When it increases it, then sodium is reabsorbed, hydrogen is secreted, bicarbonate is reabsorbed, resulted in basically what he says, filtered bicarbonate, increased filtered bicarbonate reabsorption, coupled with, by the way, increased hydrogen secretion. So you're getting rid of hydrogen, you are adding more bicarbonate, obviously you're creating metabolic alkalosis. So this is, this is done. Uh, look at the aldosterone. This bit probably you don't, you didn't put together. How come? Increase aldosterone increases bicarb secretion. Well, what does aldosterone do? Aldosterone acts on the principal cells and basically reabsorbs sodium, right? Coupled with increased potassium secretion, which is a side thing, side show in this whole thing, causing hypokalemia. This is not we are, we are not concerned about this right now. So basically, the sodium which is reabsorbed. Let me say it like this: sodium is removed from the lumen. It's the same thing, right? If you remove the excess of sodium from the lumen, sodium is positively charged. What are you leaving the lumen uh, to be in? More negativity, right? This more negativity will attract the neighboring alpha enteric cell into giving up their hydrogen. So the hydrogen will feel like it's being magnetically pulled from the lumen, which is the, the negatively charged lumen. And that's how indirectly increase aldosterone increases hydrogen secretion. And that whole reaction gets increased. So for each hydrogen that, that is secreted, we know that a new bicarbonate is reabsorbed by the alpha intercalated cell. Again, this new bicarbonate absorption is, is similar to the effect here. Increase hydrogen secretion, increase uh, the, the, the difference obviously is this is filtered bicarbonate, this is new bicarbonate, important difference by the way both contribute to metabolic alkalosis. So metabolic alkalosis is happening here and it also is happening here. This is the double whammy, this is the double trouble with vomiting and hence it's tricky to treat excessive vomiting induced metabolic alkalosis. That was a special case.